What is going on, guys? It is the first Whiskey Wednesdays. I'm just going to turn that down a bit. That's a bit better. So, yeah, it's the first Whiskey Wednesday. Hopefully, the first of many to come. So, I don't know who's going to tune in for the first one, but here goes. I'm going to get this contraption out and see if it works. Let me go and get my glass. Let's get this party started. All right. Two seconds, guys. Two seconds. So, I don't like putting ice in my whiskey, so I'm trying this thing here. I don't know if you can see it, it's called a, a whiskey ball. It's like an al aluminium ball that goes in your glass. You gotta have a, a proper glass. And, um, and yeah, I wanna see if this thing works. So can you see this, guys? <laughs> I uh, bought this mad little contraption off um off Amazon and here we are but I've never I've never tried it so let's see if this bad boy works and then we'll get cracking so today guys like free feel, feel free to ask any questions but a lot of people have have rang in not rang in who, who the frick am I I don't have a telephone I meant I mean messaged in direct messaged and just wanted me to talk about failure and how how you get over rejection uh, so that is what i'm going to talk about guys and feel free to ask any questions that you want right let's see if this thing works can you see this can you see me pouring it let me see if i can do that can you all see this now yeah all right let, let's see if it works come on you bugger Yes! Get in! Look at that bad boy! This is awesome! The first Whiskey Wednesday, doesn't matter what happens now, it's a success! Woohoohoo! I'm gonna cover this ball. Like I said, I feel as though ice, it just kinda like ruins the taste, but I do like my whiskey to be cold. There we go. So what I try and do, I'm just, I try and put the glass in the fridge or the freezer, but if any of you guys are more experienced than me and know what the crack is, then um, give me a shout, let me know how you, how you take yours. But again, I hope I'm not the only one drinking here. I want to see loads of posts at the end of this. Um, showing me where your glasses. So here we go, here we go guys, right. So this is it to the first one, guys. That's a, a, a nice, decent measure. Measure for a man. Here we go. Cheers, guys. Right then, so freaking hell, failure. What a topic. What a topic that is. Um, for anyone who's trying to do anything with their lives, it's got to become your best friend. There's not a single human on earth that will be able to go through life without failing at something. And if you show me someone who hasn't failed at something, they've literally lived in a box all their lives. Because with failure, you can fail with things. Hey bud, hey Michael, you can fail at things that you don't want to do. Do you know what I mean? So you might as well go for the things that you do want to do. So it all goes back to, I'm gonna go right back to school. I think that our education system is absolutely do lally. It's, it's not good. I'm trying not to swear and stuff just in case kids and stuff wanna watch this later on um, because this is for everybody, guys. We are conditioned from a very, very young age, guys, to get up, go to school, nine to five, boom, 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 Monday to Friday. I can remember absolutely hating Sunday nights. Sunday night bath time. Can any of you guys relate to that? Can you remember Sunday night bath time? 
UK education is dog shit. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So can you remember Sunday, Sunday night bath time? I can remember from like six upwards, even to like when I was like 14, 15, just even though it wasn't Sunday night bath nights then I had more than one bath a week by that point in my life. But when you're a kid, especially if you're a northerner, you had one bath a week as a seven year old, or at least I did, I, like I said, I'll be very honest. But I just used to get this pain, guys, this feeling of like, oh my God, oh my, I've got to go there again tomorrow. And straight away, I've switched off. I'm, I'm zombified. And from a young age, it's get up, go to school, come home, have your tea. So you're conditioned into this routine. Now, the things that we get taught at school, it doesn't really prepare you at all for the real world. And you get put this in, insane amount of pressure put on you to, you must pass your exams, you must do this. If you want a good life, you have to pass this and this and this and this. And I'm sorry to burst everyone, it's not true. Because do you know what happens? If you fail, you can sit it again. If that's what you want to do with the education, you can, if you fail, you can resit those exams. I failed my maths GCSE three times. Hey, Daniel, I got it on my, um, I got it on my fourth go. And I'm not ashamed of saying that, but at the time I was. At the time I was devastated, embarrassed. I felt like a loser. I felt a grade school is definitely much more risky. Yes, yes, Ted. Um, I felt like, like dog crap. It was a horrible, horrible feeling. Schools and the way we're taught, we're, we're taught to fear failure. It's the wrong way around. You should be embracing failure, guys. Thomas Edison, this, this story, I might be hashing it a bit, but he got let go from his school and, and when he went home, the, the teacher had given his mother this letter. And if I've got this story wrong, guys, please correct me because like I say, I'm riffing here. I'm just talking. Um, but yeah, so this story of... He, he got sent home from school one day with a note and... To, to give to his mother and his mother read the note and he's like what why why can't I go to school? why aren't I at school and his mother told him she went look uh, you can't go back to school because the teachers said that you're that intelligent and you're that clever it's just not fair for all the other children in the school um so what we're going to do some from now on I'm I'm going to um I'm just going to take you and and we're going to do it ourselves the truth was of that letter, and Thomas Edison, for those of you, I'm sure everyone knows, he invented freaking the light, the light bulb, electricity. He's, he's one of the, the most incredible, prolific inventors of our time, guys. Insane. Um, and when his mother passed away, he got, to, he got to read that letter. And do you know what it said? It said that we can't have your son at this school anymore. He's, he's slow. And I, I don't want to offend anyone, but this is, he's retarded, because back in those days, he didn't care. He's mentally slow, he's disruptive, he, he lacks focus, he lacks attention, um, he's, he, he needs help, he needs help. Now that mindset, guys, his mother told him that he could be anything he wanted, that he's super brainy, super clever, and look at what he went on to do. 1,000 experiments, 1,000 failures before he came up with a light bulb, before he came up with electricity. Now let's go back to that, that education and that, that teacher in particular. Just, just imagine if Thomas Edison's mum told him the truth, what was written in that letter. I'd be freaking sat here in the dark right now, guys. Do you know, I'd be drinking whiskey by freaking candlelight. That's how insane it is. And and we're conditioned to do this, so you go to school and all through, you've got to pass your exams. If you pass your exams, you'll go, go and do your A-levels and you'll become, you'll, you'll have a better life. You do your A-levels, you go to university and then, then you get your job and, and you're going to have a good life. It doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. What happens then is we are being conditioned to be great civil servants. Now, there is nothing wrong with that as well because we need, we need those people in this world and they are freaking amazing. And this isn't um, anything disparaging to teachers. I've had some of the most phenomenal teachers on planet Earth, some phenomenal teachers, and they are worth their weight in gold. They really, really are. 
but uh, it's it's so it's not the teachers that I'm talking about. It's the system, the the system in its entirety. But yeah, civil servants and things like that, they're amazing and we need them. We need policemen, we need firemen, we need um, doctors, freaking hell. Like, I can't do that stuff. Someone has to do it and, and someone who is hopefully incredibly passionate. But what happens is, so if, if you get that far, you get to university, you come out of university, that's now what, you're 21 if you, if you don't have any like years off like I did. You're 21 years old and you've been in this system now Hey Julian, you've been in this system now since you're about four years old. Mentally conditioned, Monday to Friday, nine to five, nine to five, nine to five, nine to five. Nine to five. Can't fail. Got to do this. Afraid of failing. Take the safe job. So when you leave university, immediately it's like coming off a drug because you haven't got that routine anymore, and you're so used to that routine, it's impossible to break. You are desperate. Desperate to find that nine to five, find that like that that safety, that safety, and and that fear of failure starts to kick in. It starts to kick in mentally, and physically, and emotionally, and it can drown you out. You know, ninety five percent of people on earth, they'll try something three times, guys. This is this is our pain threshold that we've got when it comes to failure. They'll try something three times. And if, if they don't crack it on the third go, that's it. They, they can't take it anymore. And they quit and they go and they, they give up on the dreams and the goals. And they go off and do something else. Like my experience with failure, guys, I fail every single day. Every day. And if I'm not failing at something, it means I'm not, I'm not attempting to do something difficult. For instance, I've just started to edit my, um, my YouTube videos on the YouTube channel. And it scared the life out of me. I've never done that before. And it, it, I sat there one one Saturday for hours learning this and messing it up and messing it up. And I I, I just knew I was listening to my own own spiel in my head. Well, this is it's not meant to be easy, Steve. It's not meant to be easy. If it was easy, everybody do it. You're not growing. You don't grow through easy. You don't grow through that nine to five at all because you're you're so afraid of that failure. But the irony is. The more you fail, the closer you're going to get to success. Like I went for an audition today, and, and as an actor, when those auditions come in, when you're at my level, uh, loving your work, mate, cheers, Sharon. When you're at my level, which is a job in actor, getting an audition is a beautiful thing. Hey, Jatinda, uh, shared to men for mental health. Yes, mate. Hey, Helen. So, yeah, it's... Um, so yeah, I went. It's it's an absolute honour and a privilege at my level in in the game to to get auditions, to get castings, um, and it's a numbers game. So I went in there today, and I didn't put any pressure on it because you shouldn't. I I went in there and I had fun and I did what I love to do and I I gave it my best shot. I gave them my flavour, and then I let go. But that that ability to do that has come through. Freaking 18 years in this game now. I'm just going to take a... I hope you guys are not leaving me leaving me dry. I can't be the only one drinking on Whiskey Wednesday. I feel every day tracking my macros. Lol. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. freaking lootly Hello from Sunny Darlow. Hello, pal. So, yeah, this, this thing with failure, make it your best friend. Make it... <laughs> cheers. Cheers, Michael. Make it your best friend. Do not be afraid of it because the more you fail, the more you will succeed. You show me someone who isn't brave enough to take a risk, you know, and, and really put their heart on the sleeves, which is a hard thing to do, you know, um, then they, they're, gonna, they're not going to fulfill their absolute potential. And, and it's all about that. It's like being truly and utterly as honest with yourself as can, no matter how much people may laugh at you or go, oh, God. What's, what's he thinking? What's she thinking? It doesn't matter, guys. Whatever it is you want to do, just do it. Just freaking do it. Have you seen that, that Shia LaBeouf? Do you know the actor Shia LaBeouf? What a, like, everyone was laughing their heads off. But when I watched that video where he's just, he's going mental, isn't he? He's going, you want to you wanna be a tennis player? Just do it! Do it! You, you want to you wanna be an actor? Do it! And it, it's it's ridiculous, but it is as simple as that. 
It's it's all right, Mike. It's all right, Mike, mate. It's all good. It is as simple as that. You just literally have to do it. And if you're feeling, I had the best attitude towards life. Oh, bless you, Helen. Love you, mate. Um, Sacramento, California. I was living right near there, dude, up until uh, like a year ago. Um, and I, I will be, I will be back, back there at some point, 100%. Just taking a, a, a whiskey break. But yeah, guys, and, and this is the exciting thing. If it scares you, do you know when you get that, like, like your skin starts to get a bit hot and, and you start to go a bit red? Do you know when you're going in, into interviews and stuff like that? Smile. Because that feeling means that you're alive, guys. You're freaking alive. You're doing something that you really, really care about, that you're really freaking passionate about. And, and there's no feeling like it. You know, you don't want to be the walking dead. You don't want to be conditioned to do that nine to five blah, 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 and just stay safe because this is what happens. I just go to work. I'll come home. I'll have, I'll have a drink and I'll, I'll watch The Walking Dead. Then I'll watch... Channel 9 News. What are we having for dinner, love? Oh, nice fish and chips again. Cool. Cool, thank you. I'll just drink this again. And it, it's just death. No whiskey still hung over. Well, you you deserved it, mate. It was your 40th, wasn't it? So, happy birthday. Please tell us about Abe, your experiences, inspiration act. Yeah, no worries. Um, Abe, hardest thing I've ever done. Scariest thing I've ever done. Um, three years of, of pain, of crying, of being let down. Of, uh, <laughs> cheers to you, just describe my life. But it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. Right, L let me tell you about risk taking. I want every single one of you to take, at, at the end of this, this week, take a freaking risk. It doesn't have to be a massive one. I don't want you to do anything crazy like freaking go sky skydiving. But just do something that makes you feel a little uncomfortable. It could be something like, oh, I'm, I'm scared of going to a boxing class, so I'm going to go to a boxing class. Anything, because I'll tell you, tell you like what, how risky life is. This is how risky life is, guys, so you might as well take risks because we're not getting out of it alive. We're not, get, we're not getting out of life alive, so you may as well take the risks now. From a young age, I don't know where the hell I got this from, guys. This, this, like, I have a, 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 a fire, a, a burn. It's like, I can, I can never, ever, from, from about the age of seven, it's always been there, this burning in my belly, where I, I it just, I want to do something, I want to do something. I don't know what it is, but I just know that I don't want to waste a second of my time on this earth. So I went through lots of stuff. I boxed for, for a lot of years. It wasn't really for me. I uh, didn't do anything with it at all. I just, it, it was a hobby and it still is a hobby as you can see from my freaking broken nose. Then I um, I found my first love in table tennis, believe it or not. From the ages of age of 14 to 19, I played table tennis and was obsessed with it. Christmas day, me and my brother and a few of my Middlesbrough friends were, um, were Christmas day all the time. And in fact, one of my friends is... Top 30 in the world now. Paul Drinkall is number one in England. He went on to smash it. I got to like top top 20 in my age group in boxing next week in Borough. Yes, mate. Is that risky enough? Yes, it is. I salute you, Adam. I salute you. I used to walk to up Armstrong Bank and rent VHS. Yes, that's where it all started, dudes. That video shop. I can remember watching films and just being too scared to say, that's what I want to do. Do you know, I get so low and down. That's what I want to do. And I didn't dare tell anyone because I didn't want to be laughed at. But now I'd look back on that and I, I was like, what an idiot. And this is why I'm here now talking to you about failure. And guys, I fail every single day. Like I said, I've been to an audition today. I may not hear back from that. Do you know what I mean? But is that a failure? To, to the average person, they'll see it as that. For me, it's growth. Because I'm constantly getting, walking this through Gisborough Road. <laughs> nice one, mate. This is awesome. So, um, so yeah. So, so today, it could be, is, is it a failure? Or is it an opportunity to grow? To be in front of a panel of 10 people, 10 executives at the Burbessa, uh, and, and doing my thing. You know, it's, 
it's growth, it's opportunity. But going back to Abe, um, three years of pain, to be honest. But in the end, it was the best thing. And today is the thing that I'm most proudest of. Like I say, I was I was petrified. And I did a documentary of it all. It's all on the YouTube channel um, from dating back two years of me going through the whole journey of that and how scared I was, how three times I lost the director. So I can remember the third time it happened, guys. I wanted to shoot the film in um, November of, I can't remember what year now, but I wanted to shoot it in November. I'd been prepping, as in physically and mentally, for 18 months at this point, and I was around about seven and a half stone, miserable, starving, crying, uh, name that, what, my next, next films, sure, I can give you the working titles, because in mine, if the, if it was other people's, like the ones that I auditioned for, I'm not really allowed to say, but mine, the working titles, because they could change, I mean, Abe was called Puppy Love, this is what I mean about growth and not being af afraid of being rubbish, the first few drafts of Abe were nothing to what, what the final result was, for instance, it was called Puppy Love, and it was about a homeless man who was in love with his dog, that's what I mean about growth. You know, if you don't start, you never know where you're gonna where you're gonna get to go. But going back to it, so November, I'd already lost two directors through um, just difference of opinions. They're still great friends of mine, but sometimes it doesn't work. You know, if you're not on the same page, it doesn't work. But I'd locked down this director, and I was over the moon. I was like, finally, I'm gonna get to shoot this November. Here we go, November. Here we go. It's not a failure, it's also learning. Abe is like, oh, thank you, Andrea. Thank you so much. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm two weeks out from shooting and I'm like, yes, I'm going to be able to eat again. I just I just want to do it now. I, I feel so low. I'm so depressed. Like, I'm, I'm dying. It's, it's hurting too much. Ten days before we're about to shoot, the director gets a job. You know, Abe, no one got paid on Abe. It was a passion project. Everyone believed in my vision, thank the Lord, and they came on board, and look at what we created. But when that, when I lost that director, guys, another one, I have meltdowns all the time. Did you know Walt Disney had seven nervous breakdowns? No, three nervous breakdowns, and went bankrupt seven times. Walt Disney, look at what he created. Because there is no reward without risk. There is no reward without pressure. There is no reward without failure. So I, I burst into tears. I was like, I just want to give all these investors. I've let everyone down. I want them all. Whiskey Wednesday, yes. Cheers for reminding me, VJ. So yeah, um, and I just wanna, wanted to give everyone the money back. I was like, I can't do it. I cannot go through Christmas and stuff without eating and and seeing my family and enjoying that, I was an absolute wreck. And I did, I, I quit on Abe, again, failure, quitting, fail, it all comes out hand in hand, because I was trying to do something that I've never done before. It was way out of my comfort zone, I was petrified, and I was just like, I'll take the easy route, I'll give everyone the money back, say I can't do it, I've got ill, all these excuses. Um, and then I'd, I'd spent two, two days just, chilling out and this is a plan I came up with. I came up with the plan to, all right, I'm gonna give myself two weeks over Christmas to relax and I'll find someone else. I have to get this made now, I've come too far. It's for my brother, I don't wanna let him down. You know, the film's dedicated to my brother, Lackey. Uh, I don't wanna let him down, I've gotta do it. But that meant another four months of of not really eating and and not really being available to audition for anything else because, you know, who who wants a seven and a half stone, full bearded, long haired, like I literally looked like I was dying. Um, no one wanted that. And that, that broke me, that, that really did break me. But that little two week break I took, I allowed myself over Christmas, gave me the fuel to come back in January and for January and February, just go boof. Where can you watch Abe? If you go on the YouTube channel, mate, the trailer to it is on there, the one minute trailer, but it's now on Amazon, iTunes, and Google Play. Uh, it's a 15 minute short film, the first one I've ever wrote and produced, uh, which opened up many doors again. So I was that close, guys, to quitting that and going, nope, 
Um, it, it's not fair, blah, blah, blah. I, I, I don't want to do it. Holy shit, what a big mistake that would have been. It would have been... Ah, I, I just can't even imagine it now, seeing, seeing what we ended up creating. Which now, because I've got over that hurdle of failing over and over again, because directors dropped out, actors dropped out, cameramen dropped out. So much stuff went wrong, but in the end, it all came right, because I just kept going. One failure next day, just, just go sleep on it, stay next day, next day. Because at the end of the day, guys, it doesn't matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. I'll say that again. It does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. You're in this for the long run. So, Abe now, since Abe, it gave me the confidence and the experience to write like a morpho. So I've wrote another short film that I've been asked to direct. So I'm going to be making my directorial debut at some point in the near future. Which again, petrified. I've never done that before. Been directed plenty of times, so I have an idea of it. I've wrote and produced the film now, so I have a an inkling. But I've never, I've never done that. Do you know? So it, it's going to be another test. And I've wrote two um, six part TV, one six part drama for TV and a massive epic, like a Netflix epic, a cross between Game of Thrones and Gladiator. But this is what I mean, and this is not no promise. They, these shows that I've written, have you read The Twelve Rules of Life by... Yes, mate! Do I have any book recommendations? I have a million, dude. Um, the one... I'm just looking at my bookshelf right now to give... There's one called Unshakable. Which is, is that what it's called? I think it's um, Unshakable is Tony, one of Tony Robbins' new ones. But I loved um, Shoe Dog. I love biographies of, of insane people. So Shoe, Shoe Dog is exciting, can't wait. Thank you. Shoe Dog is um, Phil Knight, the guy who created Nike. It's his autobiography and it is phenomenal. Phenomenal. And uh, anything by, by Tim Ferriss is is incredible too that guy guy's a genius and he interviews geniuses so you want to learn by the best whatever it is that you guys want to do in life there's already thousands of people 20 years ahead of you who've already done it so it's not rocket science pick up the books and and follow their footsteps you always look so happy mate mate it's 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 a facade it's a whiskey um, good point, but I'm not, not James, not all the time. Um, I'm human like everyone. Like I, I said, I have massive meltdowns. I, I've, I've suffered from bouts of depression when I've, um, when I've been really... It's always when I'm striving for something insane that scares the shit out of me. You're an inspiration, like... Oh, mate, you just put me... I love Paddy Constantine and Shane Meadows. They're, they're insane, dude. Thank you. Thank you for that. What whiskey is it? Trade secret, mate. But um, Finn, when you come up, it's it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a single malt. That's all I'm all I'm gonna reveal out of this this contraption. But um, but yeah, guys, that that uncomfortability. Going back to, I'm always smiling. Ninety percent of the time, I am. But when I'm down, guys, you still relaxing with a game of table tennis? <laughs> Rob, no, not anymore. I, I haven't picked up that bat for a long time. But, um, yeah, I, every, everyone goes through it. Every single human on earth has a, has a touch of, of depression, depression or low bouts in it. But it's how you handle it, guys. And how you, like, um, two days ago, I had a massive low, low patch. Massive low patch because... I'm, I'm writing these children's books. It's, it, it, it's about being as good. The key of life, guys, is variety and stretching yourself. Sometimes you bust. I like that, mate. Charlie's coming up with some corkers. Um, but yeah, so... But I understood and I was like, okay, this means that I'm doing something great because I feel like shit. It's so weird. Um, but I know that if I can get through that, Get through that that period of struggle. That's you know slugging it out. The end result is there's going to be one or two things. I'm either going to one, like with Abe. I see Abe as a big win. I see Abe as a big win. But let's say Abe went the other way and it, it didn't turn out the way I wanted it. I'd have grown. I'd have learned from my mistakes. 
or what other people see as failures, I'd have grown and made something a lot better. Is the film Rocky? <laughs> no. Um, I, I don't know what you mean. Uh, is the film Rocky? The film that I love. That It's it's a great film. Relate to uh, I Suffer From, but in a, in a good place. That's it. Own your shit as well, guys. Don't be afraid of saying it, especially men. Like that. Yeah. Don't show your emotions. Don't talk about it. Guys, that was the worst thing I ever did. That it proper messed me up. Because I didn't feel, especially being from the north, I didn't feel as though I could take off this mask and I always had to be there. Yeah, all right, yeah, just having a whiskey and that, yeah. All right, mate, all right, chaw, and all that. And I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? It's insane. And that made me even more depressed. But talking about it, knowing that every single human on earth, especially those who are really trying to create a beautiful life, not just for themselves, but for the people they love, is it you're gonna get it so when it comes along guys just know you're not alone we're all in the same boat just deal with it try and smile as much as you can try and do something that'll take you out your head because if you're in your head you're dead i find that i get like that writing yes writing ted is for me out of all the the artistic endeavors that i've taken up um acting I haven't done directing yet, so I can't include that. Producing, um, business, whatever it is, fitness. The most loneliest is writing. It's an absolute killer. And all these, I've got a newfound respect for um, for writing. You got me on the whiskey now. Yes, Michael. Sure, I haven't heard that for years. Yeah, it's nuts, isn't it? But um, But yeah, so you've got to... Don't worry about depression. It's it's in everybody, whether they, they admit it or not, it's in everybody. But it doesn't have to define you. It does not have to define you. Um, and I have to always be honest about that for, from my own personality. I, I can't sit here and be like, oh, yeah, no, you've got you to gotta just man up. you got to man up and, and no, you just you just been weak. It's not weakness. It's a real thing. <laughs> it's a real thing. Um, and a true strength is being able to admit to it being able to share it like this with everybody else to make them understand that it's okay. If you're ever interested in sharing some writing to men for mental health for us, yeah, mate, just just get in get in touch, dude. With, without a doubt, like I, I'm an ambassador of a couple of charities. My main one is Carers Worldwide, and those guys, Carers Worldwide, is basically in our country in and in America, in most most first world countries, um, if you've got an elderly um, parents or handicapped family members and you can't work because you have to care for them full time, we have a go- government funding in place for that. You get subsidies from the government. Well, in places like Nepal, Bangladesh, um, a lot of parts of India, there's no such thing. So you've got girls and, and young boys as little as the, as young as 13, not being able to go to school because they have to care full time for the disabled parents or the disabled sib- siblings. And they are clinically depressed. They just want to die because they don't have any life. You know, it was absolutely heartbreaking. So this is, this is one of the um, inspirations for this YouTube channel, guys, and the whole Kia Life movement because I met with the founder of the charity, Anil, uh, cheers to you, Anil, who's a wonderful, wonderful human who's doing incredible things for those guys out there. And he told me about this this problem, how depression is really, really high in, in the um, the carers, especially the young ones. And I was like, holy shit, that's, it, it broke my heart because I've only experienced depression in the last like five or six years. It, it only hit me when my Pretty much when my brother died was the first real. I always had pangs of loneliness before that. Um, but when my brother passed, that was when it really like started to to get really deep into my soul. And and it just broke my heart to think that there's 13 year olds and young people like that, innocent little kids who are going through this pain, who are who are having to be grow up before the time and fend not just for themselves, but to, to rear a family and look after the pet. It, it just broke my heart. So we, we discussed it and I said, well, what are they doing for themselves? And he went, what do you mean? 
and that's where I came up with these five minute workouts. I mean, it's it's not a genius invention, but these guys have nothing. So I, c I couldn't do weights or anything. It just literally had to be a mat or a piece of grass and, and, and let them go because health releases dopamine, serotonin. It's the most addictive drug in the world and it's the best drug ever. When I get into a really low bout, bout man, training is my medicine. Training saves me all day long and I recommend, highly recommend that to each and every one of you. Go for it, and it doesn't have to be something intense, five minute run or five minute burpees, read something inspiring or listen to something inspiring and instantly, you, it won't disappear. Now, Matty, it will, it, but you'll be lifted. You, that, that horrible dark cloud will, will move to one side and you'll be able to see again, you know? So, so just do something so the, the key of life the four fun fundamentals of health, wealth, love and happiness. Health, for me, is number one. Without that, nothing else works. That's, that's a basic foundation. So for the carers worldwide, um, I, w I was like, okay, I'm going to develop some really basic beginners five-minute workouts that they can do first thing in the morning or in the afternoon to give them a lift, to give, the, to give them a sense of self-worth because that's what they don't have. They don't have any self-worth. Uh, they just feel worthless and alone. And, and Anil and the Carers Worldwide Charity are teaching them how to how to be proud of what they're bloody doing, you know. But a, again, the only way you can be completely selfless is to be a little bit selfish. Um, how can I explain that? Mother, Mother Teresa, for instance, she helped more people than God, God knows, more people than I'll ever help. I'm doing a, a little bit here, but more people than I'll have ever help. And... Um, and there's a bit of that that was incredibly selfish because when she was interviewed and asked, why do you do this? Um, she went, because I want to be remembered. Not just for that. She didn't just do it for that. Um, but when you do, have you ever noticed if any of you guys have done anything for charity? It's, there's, there's a scientific, it's been proven scientifically that giving releases more of the, the, the serotonin, the happiness vibes, than actually buying something for yourself. So do any of you, like parents and stuff, or even when you buy a present for, for someone in your family or, or your kid, that feels 10 times better than when you buy something for yourself. Even something small as buying your mate a coffee as opposed to buying yourself one. It's a great feeling. So in order to be truly selfless, you do have to be a little bit selfish. There's a light right in my head, isn't there? Let me, let me move that. Yeah, so keep these questions coming in, team. If you've got anything to, to ask, let me move this. Is that better? Yeah, I think that's better. Yes, it's been a scorcher today. So yeah, failure, guys. Failure's got to be your best friend. And do not be afraid. The amount of the amount of things, ventures that I've gone into that have fallen flat on their ass and have been devastating at, at, at the time. It, I, the, I can't even freaking can't even tell you hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of failures, guys. But I've learnt from every single one of them. And the first, the first fifty, I can't even remember the first fifty. They were painful. And every single time I gave up for two weeks, and then I was like, no. Ah! I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Just get up and do it. And and then I was back on the horse. Um, like this, this Whiskey Wednesday, it, it just came to me and I was like, I'm going to try and stick to this from nine till 10 every Wednesday night, wherever I am in the world, whether I'm on holiday and stuff. If I've got internet, I'm going to get on here and and just talk about whatever topic people want me to talk about and it was failure came up a lot like I've just failed my GCS young kids as well this is why I'm trying to not swear as much um young kids saying oh I've, I've got my GCSE coming up on my A-levels I'm, I'm nervous I'm scared I don't want to fail I don't want to fail if you were to choose a talent you don't have that I don't have what would it be holy moly mate um well first I don't believe in talent I, I, I don't think it exists. I think hard work beats talent nine times out of ten. Um, ten times out of ten, to be honest. Especially when talent doesn't work hard. But if there was a skill 
because because my talent is hard work. Can we drink gin instead, Karen? Yes, I'll I'll allow it. I'll allow it as long as as long as it's um, pure pure gin. Um, so yeah, I'd say skill, mate. You, it's it's a guitar. It's a guitar. Look, guys, it's it's sat there in the cut. Can you see it? It was a bit too bright. Can you see it there? That poor thing. I feel sorry for it. It's like if I was in a relationship, guys, and that was my missus. It's been abused and neglected. I've I've abused that thing, um, and and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Miss Mrs. Guitar, but I promise one day I will pick you up. But if if I could have any skill, it'd be that, and to be able to sing better. I did a couple of musicals when I first started out in um, in acting, and I actually went to a, a musical theatre college. So back then, I can't sing for shizzle now. It's just non-existent because for me, again, it wasn't a a natural thing. So I had to at, at drama college. We were getting lessons every single week, so you naturally got a bit better. I was never a great singer, but I could hold a tune good enough to get me in a couple of musicals, but never, never good enough to to be a leading man in a musical. I just didn't have the pipes for it. And that's not me being pessimistic, guys. You have to know your passions and where you want to go. You'll save a lot of time doing that. So after two musicals, I was like, eh, I get more of a buzz acting. I get more of a buzz acting and... I prefer to sing musicals in the shower or in the car as opposed to on stage. You'll be a master soon enough. Cheers, mate. Cheers. So uh, that's a skill, the guitar. I wish that and uh, learning a language. Like I can speak a little bit of Punjabi. My family are from India, as the majority of people will know from from this complexion. You know, my family are from India, but we don't talk like this. And that, no offence to any of my Indian friends who do talk like that. It's a great accent. And it, hopefully it'll get me a lot of jobs in the future. <laughs> hey, mate. Hey, Joseph. Uh, you should whack. Get 70 out after another whiskey. Oh, for those guys who don't know, Get 70 is an epic song from the musical Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> Gee, it's, and it's ridiculously hard. It's a solid, solid song to sing. Um... But I got I got my voice to a, a level where I could sing it quite confidently, and that's the song that I sang that got me my two musical uh, jobs, which were Joseph and his amazing technical a dream core. I played Isica, and um, but I didn't talk like that. I don't know why. It's it's this guys. It's this. Um, did you watch the video? What video, Joseph? I don't know which video, mate. Um, oh, do you mean the Jesus Christ Superstar DVD with Glenn Carter? Of course I did, mate. I was obsessed with it. It's one of my favourite musicals. That's why I wanted to learn to sing that song. So again, I set a target, cack in my pants. Um, and I remember, remember, drama college is a, a very, you know, judgy. You know, everyone's in competition because you don't realise back then that there's room for everybody. And the only person you're in competition with is yourself. The one I sent you, get yourself back on Hollyhocks. <laughs> um, great, great show. I had a great time on there. I've still got a lot of good friends who are on there. Look out for my uh, buddy Stu Manning. Am I allowed to say that? I don't know whether I'm allowed to say that actually, uh, but I've said it, so I won't say any more, but you know what I'm on about. Um, yeah, great show. I had fun. Joseph, I'm not, I'm not sure, mate. Where did he send it? But yeah, so Gethsemane, at our college, when you got into the third year, you did, on a Friday, you did what's called a performance class, where five third years were, were picked to perform. You knew a week in advance, it was always on the notice board and you'd always be shitting yourself, were picked to sing in front of the rest of the school. So Friday classes would finish at five o'clock and from five till six, everyone... Uh, sat in the theatre because our our drama school had a had a theatre an auditorium. Sat in the theatre and and you got up on the stage and you sang. Now imagine singing in front of not just an audience but an audience full of ridiculous singers. Some of who have for the last ten years been the leads in every single West End and Broadway musical going. And there's me 
getting up there. Um, and I could have I could have played it safe. I could have sang something really easy. Um, private mate. Oh, okay, Joseph, mate. Okay, nice one, mate. So, um, but I decided not to. I was like, I've got to, I've got to push now, guys. So, I'm I'm singing Gethsemane in front of the entire college of these unbelievable artists, ridiculous singers. Singing wasn't my strength. It was always acting. Acting was always the thing that I was most drawn to. Um, and I remember for a week before I got on that stage, I I'll just sing this song. Backed out every single time. Sleepless nights, throwing up. I was that freaking nervous. But I got on that stage, willing to fail. I sang the song. It went all right. It wasn't brilliant. I could have done it miles better. I was absolutely... I only want to say it was all shaky and, and like that. My hands were literally doing that. Um, but immediately after I'd finished singing it, I was like, what was I scared of? And I was dying to do it again because I was like, I can do it better now. So you've got to get that first initial bit of fear, that fear of failure out your system. And that's how you grow. But every single time in my career, I've done something like that. I've I've done it where I'm like, Oof, pff, I'm... This makes me nervous. And immediately, I'm like, if it makes me nervous, I have to do it. I have to do it. Cool, Joseph, I'll check it out. Did you send it to um, Facebook Messenger, Joseph? So, um, so yeah, do do something that, that makes you nervous this week. Something that scares you a little. Um, and I want, in the best way possible, if you've been listening to this from the start, I wish... For everybody who's watching here and watches it later on, for everybody to fail as much as I've failed, I really do because that's how you succeed. That's how you succeed. If you fail over and over, nice one, Joseph, and over again, and you don't quit, you just keep going, you keep going and going and going, and you're willing to struggle, eventually something's going to happen. Over my career, I've, I've had some incredible jobs. And like I said, at the moment, I'm, I'm hustling. I'm working as a... I'm, I'm doing a lot of personal training. I'm developing this YouTube channel. I'm going out on auditions. I'm writing children's books. I'm, I've wrote two TV shows. It's never, never ending. You know, it's never ending. But I know eventually something's going to click, whether it comes from outside or whether it comes from me. And I'd rather it came from me. I will never leave it up to chance. I will never sit there and wait for the phone to ring, wait for my agent to ring. You know, that's that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. You've got to take charge of your own career, whatever it is, and you've got to move that needle. And, and it doesn't matter if it's a tiny little bit. If you do one thing, every even every other day, it doesn't have to be every day, that you know will make, move you closer to your dreams, your goals, then you're doing something great. You're doing something great. Watch it while you're live. I don't think I, I don't think I can, mate. To be honest, I I don't know the um, I wouldn't know how to do that. I'll wait until afterwards, dude. Um, but yeah. So there's there's sixteen people watching. How many out of your six out of these sixteen? How many of you have got a drink in your hand? Just um, just let me know, cause it it'd be good to know. I don't like drinking alone, even though. I am alone in my apartment. It's just come through, Joseph. I've just seen it. Uh, it's just pop through. So I'll have a watch of that um, later on. But tell me, guys, like, like you don't have to just sit. Ask me, ask me questions. Ask me what, what, your, what are your goals? And if I was you, how would I go about doing it and getting into it? Hey, Sarah. Um... And, and don't be afraid. This this might be that uncomfortable thing. This is a safe space. If there's anyone who, who who isn't isn't friendly and isn't encouraging, I don't know how to take them off here. But there's no one on here. Prosecco, get in. Um, but yeah, so so just just do it because I know that there's a every single one of you. How did you lose weight for a? Again, I'm gonna be really really. Yeah. I'm going to be really truthful. Um, it's not big and it's not clever and I don't recommend it to anybody. I um, I started slowly by just... I stopped training completely because I needed to lose size and muscle mass um, and just start running. 
running a porridge gin and tonic. Yes! I just start running for miles and miles and miles and miles. Um, and every week, I reduce my calories by 200. So it was, it was minuscule at the beginning. Because again, being obsessed with health, knowing how important it is to my life and how much it can change everybody else's lives, um, I, I felt like a hypocrite. I was like, shit, I'm really, I don't want to damage myself. Um, to do this because then I'm being a hypocrite but as as it progressed my mind the mind this is what I mean about the mind it's such a fragile thing guys it's it's a fine line I, I went cup of tea worker tomorrow <laughs> JD and coke yes Kulpinda. um so yeah um and and I went too far guys I'll I'll be um I really need to no, then then do it, Karen, do it, and I want I want you to to send me um, a selfie of you at, at the end of your run, even if it's ten freaking meters. That's a start. Just get it done. So yeah, I I just ended up not eating at all. Um, I got obsessed with it. I I, I got obsessed with like I I became that guy. And I couldn't see it. I re I I'd gone that far far in. I couldn't see it. And when I came out the other end, I was so relieved and vowed that I would never never do that again. Um, to to that to that level because it was really dangerous. I collapsed a couple of times. I'm not proud of that, and I'm not saying that to go oh, look look at how it was stupid. It was ridiculously stupid and incredibly selfish. I have a, I have brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews who I adore more than life itself, and I was being selfish because if I'd a, if I'd a dropped off the face of this earth, I'd have ruined them. Because it's not the person who goes who suffers; it's the per people who are still here. So, I um, that's that's how I did it. It's not big, it's not clever, and um, I'll never do it again. I'll never do it again. Um, one one time only, and if if a role came in that required me to get incredibly skinny, I'd make sure I had the best like nutri. Again, I had no money, so I had to do it the hard way. But on the big budget films, you have people do it for you, and the CGI it now, the CGI, you know, the uh, is it the Martian, the Matt Damon film? Um, because Matt Damon did it way back in his career. He lost a shed load of weight and vowed never to do it again because it nearly killed him. So in The Martian, I think that's the name of the film, there's a scene where he comes out of the shower and he hasn't eaten for... They used a body double. They just got like... Just, so you only see his back and the towel and it's it's some other guy. You still come back to the borough, mate? Uh, I don't come back often, but Middlesbrough... Middlesbrough is life. Middlesbrough is home. I'm going to be back um, in August at some point. I'm not sure whether it's the beginning of August or the end. Um, but August the 1st, guys, is my 40th birthday, 40th year on this earth. And like I said, 40 is a new 20, guys. 40 is a new 20. We can't stop ourselves from getting old, guys, older. But we don't have to be old. That is the crack. Yes, we've got a lot of Middlesbrough people on here. This is what I love about our town, the camaraderie, the support. You know, we freaking, we might have our little tussles in that town when we've had a bit too much to drink, but we freaking love each other and we want everyone to win. Am I back from my birthday? I'm going to be away, Bri. I'm going to be on, on holiday. Nice one, Karen. Welcome to the naughty 40s. Um, yeah, uh, so, but it'll be after my birthday. I'm going to be abroad. I'm not, I'm not sure where I'm going just yet, but it's, it's going to be somewhere sunny. I haven't been away for ages. I've been back in London now. Almost 18 months. Last end of last February, I got back. So, yeah, looking. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. It's um, it's a whiskey. No, it isn't. Again, this is, this is what I mean. I love a whiskey. Everything in moderation. Do you know, being fit and healthy is about a, a balance. I've done everything, guys. I've been that guy who went down to 3% body fat for photo shoots and I was miserable as hell. Did that in my like my mid, mid-20s. mid Ripped to smith smithereens, but my face was like this. And I, I looked, again, I looked ill. Looked ill as hell. And I was miserable because I was eating like 
chicken and veg every single meal. That was before I became a vegan. Um, so I've, I've been to that extreme and I've been to the other extreme where I've just sat training all together and just been on it every weekend. That was even worse because the come down, you know, hangovers and stuff and just feeling really slow and lethargic all the time and just, just not the will to live, not the will to do anything. So now for me, it's about always, again, the key of life, finding that beautiful balance, do you know, I don't spend, like I used to in my 20s, I was obsessed with the gym and I was training like four or five hours a day, do you know, not all in one go, I'd, I'd probably go for a run in the morning, then I'd do some calisthenics or weight training uh, mid-morning, then I'd, I'd be boxing on the night. I just, I, I was obsessed. Um, but now, training regime, again, willing to fail and finding what works for you, it's a balance. I, I train four or five times a week and each session is about an hour long. That's it. I eat well four or five, to, five times a week and I drink once or twice a week. You know, that's it. What's, what's the biggest pet peeve about people say to you about veganism? That um, you, can't, you can't be muscular on a, on a, vegan, nutri a vegan lifestyle, that you can't get any protein from from that um, but again guys i did it for selfish reasons for for health more than i know that i've reduced my carbon footprint in the world and that's freaking awesome i'm buzzing about that but it was it was for my health and health wise it's the best thing i've ever done in my life and i will i'm gonna do a talk on my youtube channel every monday monday is about motivation guys in terms of health health related issues so like the Monday just gone, I I gave a recipe for my vegan overnight oats. And when I say recipe, guys, I mean that loosely because I am no cook. I hate it. I'm a typical fella who I, I eat for convenience. And on a weekend, I go out and, and I enjoy tasty meals by professionals. I can't cook for shizzle. I keep saying the word shizzle, guys, because I don't want to swear. <laughs> so um, don't think I'm weird or anything. I can't cook for out, but there's certain things that I can do that are quick and easy and, and keep me healthy as hell. Um, I'll be doing a talk on intermittent fasting, which is the best health hack I have, like in the last five years that I've discovered. It literally changed the game for me, especially as I'm getting older, as I'm getting into those, those I'm coming into my 40s now. Um, it is by far the best health hack ever, and that'll be coming up in the next couple of Mondays on the um, on the channel. And there'll be loads more fitness. There's so much good stuff coming. You're gonna see me get my ass kicked by a female mixed martial arts fighter, professional, Charlotte. Uh, she's unbelievable. Because I, I wanna give women kudos and I want, I want people to see how freaking strong women are and how awesome they are. I've got four older sisters and I freaking love them. And when I was younger, and I'd step out of line, they'd beat the shit, uh, shizzle out of me. And I thank them for it every single day. Cheers, sisters. Big up spirulina. Yep, I do. I love spirulina. What channel is it? There's a link on this, uh, Karen. If you click the link that, that in the description for this Facebook live feed, it's just there. Um, it's just there. Um, so you can, you can get it off that. But again, so this topic started off all about failure. So to recap, failure's got to be your best friend. You've got to love failing, guys. You've got to love it. You've got to embrace it, make it your best friend. Because it's going to be, as, as long as you're achieving in life and you're striving and you're growing, you're going to be failing. You're going to be failing. It's called growing pains. Remember when you're younger and, you, and or if you've got kids, your kids start teething. And you're like, oh my God, they're in so much pain. Look, But look what happens at the other end of that pain. They get nice gnashes. You know, you're never going to say, no, we don't want them to have any pain. Just, they, they don't need teeth. They don't need teeth. Let's just, let's just push those teeth back up there. You don't. So, through pain, a failure, through pain, comes ultimate growth, comes ultimate rewards. The more pain you're willing to put yourself through, mentally, physically, spiritually, doesn't matter what it is, the more you're going to grow, the more you're going to win. The more you're going to have that balanced, beautiful life. You know, um, Im imagine a, a baby when the, when when your little little kiddie's just learning how to walk, 
and they fall down and they get back up and then they're crawling you're like oh that's so cute look at them crawling and falling and getting but that's beautiful that's what you do don't you and you encourage them you don't go after they've fallen down the second time oh you might as well quit it lad or lass you're never going to be able to do it just stop just just crawl for the rest of your life it's cool no you allow them to struggle because you know the journey you know where they're going to go it's the same in anything you want to do it's the same i, I want to be a leading man on on big american tv shows it's painful and and some would say impossible you know only five percent of it make it why why can't i be one of those five percent and if if the opportunity doesn't come to me look at what i'm doing now i've got a i've got a camera right here i've got a, i could go out and make a film i did make a film and I won't wait for that role to come. I'll freaking write the thing, man. I'll write it, whether it takes five years, 10 years, 20 years. I know that I will keep going until I get get to where I wanna be. And, and that's an exciting thing, you know, waking up every day knowing that something great can happen because I'm going for it, because I'm pushing, 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 pushing. So, so failure is your best friend. Fall down seven times, get up eight, keep going. Do not be afraid of aiming for your goals, keep that inner child, that inner child alive and well and do not and protect it. You know, there'll be certain pe people who don't understand, certain people who will never understand. You've got to get a safe job. You've got to be an accountant, be a lawyer. You know, let's, let, that's great profession is great, but what happens if you're in a law firm for 10 years and the law firm goes bankrupt? Is that safe? It's not safe. There's no such thing as safety anymore, guys. So if you're a miserable lawyer, because I know a load of miserable lawyers who are millionaires and they freaking hate the jobs. Um, just imagine if they got let go. They failed. In their eyes, they failed at something that they don't want to do. So you might as well fail at something that you do want to do. That's, I think Jim Carrey said that in a, in a speech. Love your ambition. Cheers, Karen. It's um, it's It's a challenge. It's it's a freaking challenge, but you have to you have you have to be true to it and you have to go for it. it. It could be very easy for me to be embarrassed about like I'm I'm not working at the moment. I am an out of work actor working in, in gyms and stuff and earning a living, coaching people and, and helping people grow from the the successes and the experiences that I've had. But at the same time I'm still working on my craft because I love it so much. I do it let let's say worst case scenario, I don't get to where I wanna 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 be. I'm still gonna be doing it because I love it. Recommend the man search for meaning. Dude, can you um put that in my direct like just inbox me that? Cause yeah, guys, any book recommendations and stuff as you can see. Podcast books I read constantly. You should never be too egotistical or too too above your station to think that you know everything because that's when it all goes tits up. You should always be curious. You should always be wanting to grow. And the only way you can grow is if, you will, if you're willing to fail. You know, blockbusters, I, I'd say this all the time because it's just an incredible example. Blockbusters ruled the world, got cocky, stopped evolving, stopped wanting to learn. Netflix destroyed them. You know, if if you don't move, if you don't evolve with the times, you're gonna you're gonna die. Kodak has gone now. Kodak, and did you know back in 1989, Kodak invented. I've just read it in a book. I'm reading something called the CEO next door, and um, in there, in 1989, one of the the engineers, lovely outlook, Steve. Enjoy the whiskey. Keep well till next time. See you later. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, Kodak invented the first digital camera. I think it was either in 89 or 92, but really early on, they did nothing with it until like 10, they sat on it. Cause like, oh, this is never gonna work. It's not gonna work, we, we don't have time. So they missed the boat. They missed that window of opportunity cause they were, were, weren't willing to go. Well, it might not work, but there's only one sure way of finding out if it's gonna work or not. Fricking go for it. You know, it, it'd have been easy for me to turn around and go, oh, well, I don't think I should go to drama college because I might not get in. I don't think I should go to that audition today because I might not get in. I don't think I should try and make a film because I might not. I might, I might not get it finished. Do you know, that's, that's a crazy, crazy outlook to have. 
do not have that outlook just freaking push and i'm telling you if your dreams aren't scaring you they're not they're not big enough you know if you're not if you're not a little bit like scared of going for it like i i live in in an like quite close to tom hardy and i saw him the other day he drove down the road in this unreal freaking audi r8 spider and i just thought to myself one day i was like I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in a film with you one day, whether it's today, five years, ten years. I love the guy. I think he's freaking unbelievable actor, um, and that's that's it. Surrounding yourself in that magic, you know. If if the, if you want to be a musician, go where musicians go. You know, Nashville, London. You need to you need to get out of your comfort zone. I wanted to be an actor, um, and I was like, I've got to go to London then. There's no, I don't no no agents and stuff are gonna come all the way to Leeds to watch a show when all the best colleges are in London, they're gonna go to the doorstep. So um, this is actually decent, you know. Can you see the um? So it's not an ice cube. It's actually kept. You, if I do it that way, can you see that? It's like an I, aluminium um, whiskey ball that keeps your uh, whiskey cold. It's actually freaking really good, guys. I highly recommend. Um, but yeah, so I, I knew I had to be in London and I'd lived, grown up in Middlesbrough, I was 24 when I moved and I was petrified at 24, that's a joke, you know, because um, I'd, I'd never ventured outside of Middlesbrough. Power of the subconscious mind, awesome, awesome, thank you. How do I say it, pronounce your name? It's a wicked name, Zanetta, Zanetta, very nice name. Cheers, Zanetta. But yeah, so you have to you have to go for it and and it's taken me years, guys, to get to this level of confidence where I can fully embrace it and be completely and utterly open. Hey Saffron, I want um so so don't don't feel anything like bad about yourself if you if you can't jump out and do it so it takes time. Start with something really small. Step by step, we get ahead, you know, and then eventually you'll be able to do something, something really, really big and profound. But what's exciting about this, guys, is I'm going to I'm going to try and be really consistent with it and be on here once a week, every single Wednesday, nine o'clock. And eventually I'll start uploading these onto the YouTube channel. So if anyone misses them, they'll be there for people to see. And if you haven't, guys, spread the word about the channel. I'd really appreciate that if you can get a... Um, if you can get people to subscribe and share because I'm, I'm going to be working my butt off to make sure that you get you get incredible content coming there weekly every Monday and every Wednesday I'll be doing this and I want like my my dream is to get to get messages saying hey I, I went out and did this today I, I'll, I'll buzz off that Karen you said about the running better than Love Island this <laughs> Cheers, mate. Cheers. Um, maybe it's next week. I'll take my top off. Who knows? <laughs> if I'm competing with him. But um, no, I, um, Karen, I want you to go out and do that run. Do that run, even if it's a mile. And this is what I want you to do. If you've never run before, start really slowly. Start really slowly. And when you start to feel uncomfortable, run for two minutes more before you stop. Because your life begins at the end of your comfort zone. So as soon as you start to feel uncomfortable, Karen, that's when you know you're growing. That's when you know you are winning like the baby who's teething, like the baby who falls down when he's walking. When you feel that and you keep going after that, you start to get used to being comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's how we grow and that's how we win. Would I do a reality show? Shit. Shizzle, I mean shizzle, it's getting late, so I'm, I'm, um, shit, that's a freaking toughie, um, y yeah, there's only one that I do though, and, and, guess, guys, guess which, if, if I had to do a reality show, can anyone guess which one it'd be, there's only one in this country, yeah, there's only one show I'd do. Good, Karen, and I want you to, to post it. You don't have to post a, 
a selfie if, if you're not ready for that yet, but just a status and tag me in it. States and tag me in it. And uh, yes, you're going to do it. And remember, when you start to feel uncomfortable, run a little further. I'm a celeb. No. No, I wouldn't do that jungle. No. No. There's only a few, isn't there? So you're going to get it eventually. Eden? What's that? I've never heard of that one. What's Eden, Charlie? Big Brother? No, I got offered that. Got offered a few of them. Jungle? No. No, no, no. There's not that many more, is there? Like, I, I don't have a, a telly. I have a telly, but I only watch Netflix, and it's not tuned into TV channels. I just get Netflix, YouTube, and um, Amazon, and Google. Google Play on there. But, yeah. James, James got it, yeah. Is it called, not the ice one. I wouldn't do the ice one, but the dancing, dancing with the stars, I think it's called in America, or Celebrity Come Dancing. But it's just, I don't like that title, because I'm not a celebrity, guys. And uh, and the majority of actors I work with, they don't see that. They they, they kind of cringe at that word, to be honest. Um, it's a bit weird. We're, we're people who are fortunate enough to fall in, uh, fall in love with a profession that is in the public eye, you know, um, and, and that's it, like... I freaking love acting, guys. I cannot like it is. It's everything to me. Everything acting and and helping people achieve their goals and dreams, giving people that nudge that they need. Fantastic in Hollyoaks. Oh, you're a legend. Strictly, that's the one. Yeah, I do strictly. Um, but yeah, I I ju and I want people. I feel so lucky, guys, to have found something that I'm. I'm so in love with that even when it's going wrong, it still feels right. You know, like I said, since since Oaks, it's been a struggle. I've really like I've I've had some good little touches, but they've been sporadic. Um, things like the mummy, eh? But it all came from my own self creation. I got the mummy because the director watched Abe and and loved it. The irony of that, my first Hollywood gig, blinking you miss me, um, and. And it came from self-creation. Do you know what I mean? Self-realization, pushing myself outside of my comfort zone. Again, I cannot stress that enough. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Fail, 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 fail. And, and just keep on failing. Keep on failing because eventually you'll get that win. It's Martin Luther King. He said, it's only in the darkness. It's only in the darkness that you get to see the stars. I freaking love that quote. And there's one from Oscar Wilde that is very, very similar. Uh, Oscar Wilde says, we're all in the gutter, but some of us are looking in, up at the stars. In fact, it's on a little blurb there. Surround your house as well, guys, with positive things. Things where, if you ever are, it, it creates energy. I'm a big believer in that. So the things that are in my house, like that, my little lamp there, that's not just a lamp. It's a spotlight. So it get, it, it's, it's art, books art dvds whiskey you know it, it it's all i'm surrounded by my art i'm I've, I've created like i don't know aladdin's den do you know what i mean this this is my little den with so every morning when i get up i'll see inspiring books inspiring quotes um I, my alarm clock wakes me up to um affirmations motivational morning so i'm constantly feeding my mind with beautiful energy, which allows me to, to have this this kind of outlook and allows me to be so open with the times when it's you do feel low and you are depressed because I understand that it's it's part of life and everybody goes through it. What happened with Hollyoaks? Why did you leave? Three years, dude. Um, I'm, I'll be forever grateful to that show. Unbelievable, great time. Learned so, so much, but it's about growth. Brother, it's about growth. Um, I got to a point where I needed to learn more about the craft. I needed to struggle again. I needed to struggle. As mad as that sounds, the easy route would have been to sit in the show, uh, which I loved, and just and just enjoy the ride for year on year on year. 
but I knew that I wanted to experience different roles, play different characters, learn, grow, get out into the world, go over to America, like, and I will go back to America at some point. Toughest four years of my life, guys, and I'll, I'll speak very openly about that. If you've got any questions about that, feel free to ask. Does anyone know the time? Huh? Oh, God, it's half past ten. I was only meant to be on till... Uh, why I scream there, I have a voice, a tough little voice activated clock. Um, so every time I like make a noise, it comes on. I was only meant to be on till 10 o'clock, but I'll stay, I'll stay till, till this is over until, or until you guys get bored. Uh, what's my favorite whiskey? Dino, that's a good question. I have, I'm just looking at my, my shelf now. It depends, I like a single malt. Um, but I do like a blend as well. So like a bourbon. I think my favourite bourbon at the moment is Woodford Reserve. But I do like, uh, this is Scottish one, it's up there, Bal Blair. If you've, if you've not had a Bal Blair, it's, it's really strong though. It's like, I like it when it, it, it gives me that warm, leathery feeling um, down there. So yeah, that's, so that's why I left Hollyoaks, Michael. Um, for that reason, because I just wanted to grow. I, w I wanted to challenge myself. And and if I didn't leave, I wouldn't have gone through all these growing pains, which I've gone through over the last eight years. I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have um, done the mummy. I wouldn't have created this YouTube channel. I wouldn't have, do you know, so many things by standing still. But that show, I'll, I'll forever be in its debt. And I'll always speak incredibly highly of the place because it was a beautiful three years. Just like drama school was a beautiful three years. Uh, making Abe was a hard as hell three years, but an amazing, amazing outcome. Hi, not seen you in ages. Hey, Laura, how are you doing, mate? I'm good. Great talk. After Dash, I'll share this for you and keep tuning in. Nice one, James. I was only meant to be on till 10. So, like I said, I can talk the back legs off a donkey because there's still people on here. I just wanna, just wanna keep grinding it out with you. But eventually, guys, as well, this show's gonna develop. I'm gonna have guests on here, like top writers, directors, actors, um, people in the financial um, world and, and all sorts of stuff. So it won't be just me all the time. It'll be other people sharing their experiences, uh, not just about their profession, but just life in general, life in general. So, so yeah, you just gotta, you gotta dig in guys and don't be afraid. So if you are in a nine to five job that you're not particularly happy with, you have a life guys, you have a life and you can do it. It's not gonna be easy. It is not going to be easy, but it's gonna be damn worth it. You know, like I'm, I'm earning money doing things that I enjoy doing, but the passion, as you guys know, because I'm very open, is acting. It's acting, creating, directing, you know. Sounds great. So glad you're doing so well for yourself, top lad. Thank you. Yeah, it's um, it's work, guys. It's work, and it's um, every day, every day, you've, you've got to be willing to struggle. You've got to be willing to, to be honest with yourself, push the boat out, you know, people are gonna stop believing in you. You know, they really are. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna stop and they're gonna disappear from your lives. That's all right. That's just growth. These things happen, and you just gotta take it on the chin and keep moving forwards. But as long as you're doing something every day that one makes you grow, two makes you happy. That's a win. That's a win. And just imagine that accumulating over a period of a month. Let's say you want to get into ridiculous shape and you did one thing a day that was going to get you towards that goal and you did that every day for a month. That's 31 days of consistency and consistency is key. You are going to grow. You're going to smash it, guys. So, yeah, keep in the game. Keep your heads up. Fail, 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 fail. And when everyone disappears, you've got me here with a big smile on my face to say, keep going, because I'm, I'm never gonna stop. I'm gonna keep going. There'll be days where I'm like, I quit. I can't take this anymore. There'll be days when I break down. Do you know, um, that's gonna happen. I've, I've accepted that. That is part of, of the life I've chosen to do. 
you know, if I went and, and got a teaching job again, no, no, not meaning any disrespect, like a, what, what is deemed in the real world as a, a safe job. And yeah, I'd be on that nine to five d doing the thing and I'd, I'd never, I don't think I'd ever break down. I probably would because I'd be devastated that I've given up on, on what truly makes me happy. But it'd be the safer option. It'd, be, it'd save me a lot of pain, a lot of heartache. But that heartache allows you to grow. You grow from it. You thrive from it. So you just keep pushing. The, cheers, James. You keep pushing the boat out, guys. You keep... Pain eventually turns into strength. Pain eventually turns into strength, guys. And we keep going. That belief, you have to... You have to keep believing in yourself. And the only way you can do that is it, to make sure that you're working. You're constantly working on your goal. And by constantly, I mean, even if you did 20 minutes, 20 minutes of something in a day that's going to get you closer to where you want to be, you are going to take over, guys. I'm telling you, it's that consistency. Consistency over time. Consi Cheers, Laura. Consistency over time. But pain, man, embrace it. Be proud of it. So any of you guys, if, if you're feeling low at the moment or you've got any, any kind of like heartache or stuff like that, that's growth. That's growth. Do you know what? We could all be dead. We could all be dead. That pain you're feeling right now is a surefire indicator that you are alive and well because you can feel so deeply. You can feel so much. So just just keep at it, guys. Right, I've got a tiny little bit in here. I'm going to wrap it up, guys, because I, I was only meant to do this 9 till 10. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate that. I hope this has helped. I'm going to try and keep it consistent every Wednesday, 9 o'clock. If there's anything that you want me to talk about to start the topic off with, just give me a shout and I'll be sure to talk. I won't mention your name if you don't want me to say who, who gave me the topic. I'll keep it completely anonymous. And, and we'll riff and we'll grow together, guys, and, and we'll keep on pushing forwards. So the YouTube channel, the link is on the feed for this, this video. So do me a big favor, guys, and just click subscribe, share it with everybody, and eventually these Whiskey Wednesdays. The first one, well done. Thank you so much for joining me on the first Whiskey Wednesday. Um, it's awesome. Have a good evening. Thank you. And, and guys, God bless. Good night, subscribe to the channel and have an awesome Thursday. Do something painful, grow from it, learn for it. Peace. Good night, guys.